Um, so I wanted to uh, throw in a definition or two from Annie Besant in her study on consciousness, just for you to start thinking about. And her term she's defining here is consciousness. And to begin with a definition of terms, consciousness and life are identical. Two names for one thing as regarded from within and from without. There is no life without consciousness. There is no consciousness without life. <clears throat> When we vaguely separate them in thought and analyze what we have done, we find that what we have called consciousness turned inward by the name of life and life turned outwards by the name consciousness. When our attention is fixed on unity, we say life. When it is fixed upon multiplicity, we say consciousness. And we forget that the multiplicity is due to is the essence of matter, the reflecting surface on which the one becomes the many. What it is said that life is more or less consciousness is not an abstraction. Life that is thought of, but a living thing more or less aware of its surroundings. The more or less aware Awareness depends on the thickness, the density of the enwrapping veil that makes it a living thing separate from other fellows. So where we talked about the monad and this delicate, delicate sheath that did not block obstruction of interacting with anything else on that upper plane, what she's saying here is that because each time you come down, and that was plane number one, a veil gets added on the involution of coming into the system in this second solar system. When you hit bottom, which is the bottom of the chart, and then you're gonna start going back up, you got a veil added each level of the seven levels on the way down. Now you're working to eliminate those veils again and move up. So, um, that is, uh, and that's why he's saying the, um, the more or the less aware of its surroundings, the more or the less awareness depends on the thickness, the density of the enwrapping veil, which makes it a living thing separate from the other fellows. So when we say somebody is dense, um, we probably mean that. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, <laughs> is um, because they don't, from our viewpoint, they don't get it, right? Isn't that pretty much what we're trying to say is, you know, you crack a joke or something and somebody doesn't get it, it just goes right by them? Yeah, Ram Das used to like to use the word gross. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> we'll be nicer here. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we'll be technical here. Yeah. There's more veils there. So anyway, the, um, and there's one other word it's going to show up. Again, I'm just gonna blow this by you and then we're done with this today. There, you're gonna see the word fohat in here, F-O-H-A-T in some of her works. Um, so that relation is magnetic but of the magnetism of the subtlest kind called fohat or dava prakriti. And just bear with me if I butcher words. Um, I've never been too concerned about pronouncing something correctly. <laughs> um, meaning the light of the logos. It is a substance. It is an essence of consciousness and an essence of matter exists polarized, but not drawn apart. So um, we're gonna, we'll come back to this, but the word fohat is always a word that's easy to escape understanding and meaning because it's subtle. It has a magnetism to it, which means it's gonna know its place because it's, it's gonna go look for its partner. 
uh, and this this is in her like book when she's describing consciousness and it is the essence of consciousness and the essence of matter exist polarized but not drawn apart and the not drawn apart significance is that when you get to the point of understanding the three and one um that that relates to consciousness we, we won't go any further with that because we're going to go back to this for a little while but i just want this stuff to start floating around in there that that um it's, it's how it's all put together is what what the scenario is here that's what spirituality is this time um when you start dealing on the mental realm it's which is where what we're doing here rather than than the astral and um it's how things are put together what is the design how do we fit into that where is our place and what our evolutionary path so on and so forth so any questions or, we're, or should we start with the spirit life and energy all is quiet okay um so we are reading white magic we are on i won't even go on to which page it is because it depends if it's a book or a an online book um but we're dealing with spirit life and energy the word spirit is applied to that undefinable elusive essential impulse or life which is the cause of all manifestation it is the breath of life and is that rhythmic inflow of vital energy which manifests in its turn as the attractive force, as the consciousness or soul, and is the sum total of atomic substance. It is the correspondence in the great existence or macrocosm to that which in the little existence or microcosm is the vital inspiring factor which we call the life of man. This is indicated by the breath in his body, which is abstracted or withdrawn when the life course um, is run. So, um, you know, and, and consequently, I imagine that's why, whether it's yoga or whether it's this or that, it's the breath, it's the breathing that they focus on. What this something is, who shall say? We trace it back to the soul or consciousness aspect and from the soul to the spirit, as we call the three aspects of the one breath. But what these words really signify, who has the courage to declare? We call this unknown something by differing names according to our particular school of thought. We seek to express it in words and end by call it, calling it spirit, the one life, the monad or energy. Again, we must remember that understanding as to the nature of this one life is purely relative. Those who are engrossed in the form side of existence think in terms of physical vitality, feeling, impulse, or of some mental force and do not pass beyond that unified life consciousness of which all the above are differentiations. Those who again, who are interested in the more metaphysical approach and in the soul life more than in the form aspect express their content in terms of soul manifestation and passing beyond the personal selfish reactions of the body nature, think in terms of life, in terms of quality, of group will or power group coordination or love wisdom and a love group intelligence or knowledge covering all by the generic term of brotherhood. But even that is found to be separative through the separation into larger units than the lower is capable of grasping. Therefore, the initiate, especially after the third initiation begins to think even more synthetically. This is a word you're gonna see all the time with him is synthesis. Okay, so the after the third, this person begins to 
think even more synthetically and to express truth to himself in terms of spirit, life, or the one. These terms mean to him something significant, but something so far removed from the concept of ordinary thinking humanity that it is needless for me to enlarge further upon it. This brings me to a point that should be dealt with here. Prior to any further expansion of our subject, in the treatise on cosmic fire and in the above passage, it frequently appears that teaching is carried forward to a certain point and then dropped with the statement that owing to the point of evolution of the average man, his reaction to truth and the reaction of the disciple student or the initiate will differ. This is necessarily so. Each will read into the words his own state of consciousness. Each will fail to interpret in terms of the more advanced reactions of those on the higher stage of the ladder of evolution. The average reader, however, objects to being forced to recognize wider points of view than his own and the phraseology which says it's needless to enlarge on this for it would only be understood by the initiates serves to aggravate him, tends to make him believe that evasion is intended and that the writer, having got out of his depth, is seeking to save his face by some such statement. Just as a scientific treatise would prove meaningless and a mere jumble of words to the average grammar school child, but would carry a clear definition and meaning to experts in the subject owning to its training and mental development, so there are those to whom the subject of the soul and its nature has dealt with in such an instruction as this is as clear and as lucid as current literature to the average reader and the bestsellers, as you call them, the general public. Equally though, fewer in number, there are those advanced souls to whom the spirit and its nature is also a rational and understandable subject to be appreciated and comprehended through the medium of the soul and its powers. Just as it is possible to arrive at an understanding of the soul through the medium of the mind, correctly employed. On a lower level altogether, we know it is easy to understand the nature of the physical body through a study and a right use of the desire nature. It is a form of pride and a refusal to recognize one's temporary limitations that awakens in readers a dislike for phrases which aptly and truly say, when you are further developed, you will understand the above. This should be made clear. And that is most definitely the case you know, without belaboring the point. I, I think when you read this material and then you come back and you read it later and all of a sudden there's more little lights go off because now the words have more meaning than they did the last time you read them. Um, and that that's most definitely with this material. It's been happening for decades. Uh, where people will say, gee, I don't remember reading that. I read that last week, but I don't remember reading that. It didn't say that to me kind of thing. And what's happened is by familiarizing yourself with the original material, it goes into your consciousness and it will go pull more background information. And so the next time you come along to the set of words, your understanding is, is expanded from the first, first reading. That is the nature of this particular material. There's a certain material that has the ability to do that. And there's a lot of things that are written that are just right, right where the world is living at the moment. You know, they have no further depth than that. And I can, you know, art books, sometimes magazine articles, uh, newspapers, <laughs> all kinds of stuff that that is just presented right to the moment. This stuff has um, depth <clears throat> that's hidden in there. So, Carla, <clears throat> do you think a lot of <clears throat> just let's say man's humans education has a lot to do with this 
you know, like, so for like, uh, cause a lot of this, I have to, like Donnie said earlier, like sometimes we have to relate things to what we know in order to understand some of it. So let's say for instance, you know, growing up Catholic, the church, everything was always in Latin for the longest time. So <clears throat> it was kind of like a, just do what we say. Like, you don't need to, you don't need to know this. Like you just do what we tell you because we understand it. We're, you know, we're the scholars, we're the ones. And even, I guess, right in the, in the Jewish faith for the longest time, only men studied the Torah. They're the ones who studied the, the scripture, the works, not the women. So I think in the time and place that this was actually written, there were still a lot of uneducated people in general. So I think at this point in time for us to read this, we're, we haven't, we have more of an educated mind where we can understand this maybe a little bit more clearer, even having to reread it and for it to really sink in, being told things like, don't worry about it, just follow along what we're telling you. We understand it. You don't have to understand it. So I'm well, wondering yeah, and if I, that has a lot to do with what's being said in the book. Um, no, I mean, I think they wrote this the way they see it, for starters. I mean, I don't know if that answers one section of what you said. Um, this one was, I don't know exactly what the print date on that one was, but these these were done in the, the uh, 1900s, of course. Um, but I would say this, first of all, if you want to go to, let's say Christianity, okay. Um, the decision that, the issue that started in the second century and was decided in the fourth century changed the whole dynamics of the direction of the church because the, the Nestorians were arguing that that there were two parts of man and they had a union. In other words, Jesus was a man and then he made divine union with God. Okay. The other side of the argument was no, he was the son of God. There's only one of them. And, um, you know, all you can do is trail behind. And Cyril from Alexandria, and when they had the, the council and Constantinople, Constantine was around, said, oh yeah, it's only one. There was only going to be one son of God, and you all just have to kind of trail behind him, and we'll help you out. Okay. So to me, the, the interpretation and consequently the practice going forward uh, would be entirely different from one of those choices to the other, because the other one, you would have been trained in this. You would have, it would have been, okay, this is what happens. This is what can happen. He's demonstrated, he's shown you what uh, the way, if you will, um, you will get in some of this material, not so much this, well, he talks about like the third initiation. So there's an initiation process that's from one to nine. Uh, they are things one is meant to pursue in their life pattern actively and be consciously aware of it. And you did not get that in any way other than the definition of the first five initiations, which is what Christ demonstrated. Okay. But you did not, um, nobody told you you were supposed to do the same thing. In fact, you would have been uh, what blasphemous, uh, whatever, if you thought you could do that. There's some who got there by quite by accident, probably in their fervor and their intent. Some of them were monks, some of them were Jesuits that managed to break through that. But, um, that was by their own fervor and love and desire that they were drawn in their pursuit. Um, so I, in a way I would say no to getting to the same place because there, this, this is a direct conscious pathway that has been trod by the ancient wisdom 
men throughout time on this planet that is there, but we've never been said clearly, this is the pathway. This is what, this is what you're meant to do. Um, so I see them quite different, just simply from interpretation. And then the other thing I will say is every time you get a translation, you're only going to be as good as the translator. Right. If the translator has not experienced what he's writing about, it's always going to get dumbed down. And not intentionally. You know, I'm not saying there's something intentional. For a lack of knowledge. Who, yeah. I mean, well, who, that's what, well, that's kind of where I'm going with it because the, the accessibility, I can see where a translator wants to make it more accessible. So therefore they, they dumb it down. So more people can maybe understand it because I don't know. I just think, you know, like anthropologically speaking, you know, only certain people were allowed to study or learn to read or, you know, so, so that's kind of where I'm going with it, that maybe with the translations being dumbed down a little bit where it maybe the correct, the, the original intent or the original point may have gotten lost somewhere was trying to make it more accessible, but because there was a lack of that education that they can't connect the dots to maybe the original intent of the works. You know, like not saying that everyone needs to go the way that Jesus went, but, you know, people follow the different prophets. So, you know, you have the Muhammad out there that, you know, that let, we're going to follow him because he's our prophet. And maybe their religion sees Jesus as a prophet as opposed to the son of God. So that's maybe where the difference is and why the religions, even though they're pretty much saying a lot of the same thing, it's just in different ways. It has a lot to do with, like you said, the translation, the interpretation. And to me, it's just a lot of how it's being brought to the masses in a way that hopefully they understood, but enough where like, but we're, we're the ones who get to know this. And we're just gonna tell you a little bit cause we want, you know, almost like person's own, like they wanna get to where they, where, where the enlightenment, um, but we wanna get there first and then we'll, we'll kind of guide you through it afterwards. <laughs> so we're just only gonna give you a little bit of information. You know, whereas now we have all these books and we have so much available to us that we can figure out our way and find out the truth for ourselves. So that's kind of, I just feel like education and just um, how the how the world used to be where, where access to information and access to being able to study, you know, who was allowed to study, you know, who was allowed to be the tutors to those who were allowed to study um, varied so much as to now where information is accessible to basically not everyone because there are still people out there who who are denied even learning how to read so um, they're denied that but then they're also denied the thought you know the thought process there are people that have degrees higher than mine but like I went through psychology and sociology and all so some stuff makes more sense to me than maybe somebody who's whose school of thought or whose schooling was very different. You know, so a lot of what you're saying, I'm like, yeah, I can see them because I took a lot of classes and I've had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But I think if people aren't exposed to it, they're going to have a hard time re relating and understanding what's being said. And as a person who's had this in the back, I know I have to read through this several times <laughs> to really get the point. So I'm just like, some of it is, that's how I see some of what they're saying is, um that some people are going to get it and some people are limited so the limitation is really just what they've been allowed or exposed to through life so if you have somebody who's just basically been working since they were a child and didn't have any schooling this isn't going to make any sense to them because they're just going to go by what they think the scholars have figured it out already. So they're just gonna be like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. And they kind of leave it at that, as opposed to let's say all of us here who are willing to seek more, understand the truth more, um, just because we have the accessibility to do so. If that makes any sense. Right, except that I, I still wanna intersect. I mean, that 
the person who, who didn't have that education may be may rise through these ranks a lot faster because it's something different. This is an internal growth pattern that has um, how can I put this? Um, that picture on 117, do you guys have it in front of you? Did he send it to you? Can you look at it? It's in your notes. It's in the chat room on okay. the Zoom. All right. Maybe. Anybody Hold on. I, kind of right. remember what it looks like? The Seven Plains chart, right? We're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I've got it up. All right. So you see the the straight line and you see the geometry. All right. Mm -hmm. In essence, that is your future. The amount of time it takes is irrelevant because it'll be different for different people. The point is you have marks to make, you have points to hit, you've got to hit those points. And when you get to the top, whether it takes you eons and eons or whether it takes you one fifth of an eon. It's not related to time. It's related to the personal experiences and uh, that are driven and most of them are driven from within. Okay, that's the part that it, it's just like, let's talk about Christianity. How many people could translate that? Who would even be qualified to do that except what? A handful of people who were around him at that point in time? Who had got to the same awareness level or experiential level? And um, so it isn't a matter of them deliberately dumbing it down. It's they're not equivalent to understanding the dynamics. And I think the point is, that's what he's saying here is, is you, you work with the material and you synthesize and pretty soon all this other stuff comes together that gives you something that your education can't even give you. We got a little awareness now, but, but believe me where this material is going there is no education out there sending you in that direction right now. Hey, Donnie, I wanted to comment on that one. Nope. You're the one who's done a little bit of study. You, I mean, you did the- Oh, I love, oh, I love this material. Uh, I, I think it makes, uh, I think it comes together very nicely over time. But I certainly understand anybody's confusion in the beginning because I had Absolutely. studied, you know, I had studied the King James Bible and I spent probably a year looking up words, trying to figure out what they meant. Because I, I wanted to track back to the Bible that was the, you know, the most original translation. And I just said, I'm not reading any of the trash that these people are putting out. This is trash. No offense to everybody who's going doing that stuff. But after reading it and then just looking up words and keeping a dictionary and a thesaurus and looking up some of these words, it all starts to come together really nicely. And I'm at, I mean, after re and studying it all, just they're all saying the same thing to me, essentially. They're just all saying the same thing, but we're, but maybe not, maybe we already hit that mark and where we need to get to the next one and that, or wherever they're talking to is not where we need to get to at the time. And there's a big uh, problem if you're trying to get someplace that's not your next checkpoint, I think. Right. So I don't know. I just keep reading it until like, this is one of the things for me where I was like, I'm just going to understand this and nobody's going to freaking stop me so i'm just going to read it until and i'm going to read these words and i'm going to look up the dictionary and if another man can read this well by god i can understand it too and that's how i approached it but 
he, their writing is so perfect. In all of these books, it's mind boggling. I've found errors in every other book that I've ever read. And I, there's something about the way this is put together. It's just magic and different. It's just different. I don't know what to say. You know, I think, and you're right, Carl. I mean, it's the, the invocation and evocation, and then you can read it. And then later on, you don't even have to think about it. And then the moral, you have a new understanding. And that's magic. Right? Well, and that's, that's where the material's meant to go. In other words, whether it was the original Christianity when Christ is coming out and he's saying, I mean, why would he say you'll do greater works than I? Yeah, well, now we have a problem right there. Okay. I mean, that, that's the only sentence. Thank God they preserved that. Okay. Because there it is that tells you right there, you're meant to go even beyond where he went. And he says, and you're my brother and my sister. You know? Yeah. And I don't know um, how you misinterpret that. Right. <laughs> you know, so I guess what I'm really, I'm still trying to, to pull out is what he's talking about here and where this leads is it's, it's that internal development it's that fully development of you um, on the these layers when you look at the chart on 117 of going up okay it helps you make those connections we uh, there isn't really any other system out there i don't think in any of the other studies that are is really trying to to um direct you that way saying this is really the most important thing for you you know because like i said if this is your future and it is you got to hit these marks whether it takes you one eon or three eons to get there you got to get there and that's that's your development phase so so this is this is the true development that we as human creatures on this planet that is our pathway. That is that is our way to to provide the service to this planet that and become what the planet needs. I mean, they didn't. Planet isn't just having us down here for fun. We have a purpose. We have a service, and it's not just picking up the garbage out there. You know. Um. So. And so that's that's kind of what I'm saying when I'm saying they don't dumb it down. They aren't up there to to really be able to elucidate it. I would suggest that that this writer and the access he has to documents and materials of experience of other individuals who've gone through this pathway, um, that 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 material is different because it's like. It, it can carry you along. It can help pull you up. Um, yeah, and I don't, I don't see that with most of it. It's being trained to deal with today. You know, and this is training you to deal with life, yours, the life ever after, if you will. So, and becoming more aware of it. But anyway, that's just my my view on it because. You don't know where it's going to take you until you've worked with it long enough for it to take you somewhere. Yeah. Now, um, did I end at that paragraph? Do I start it to the master of the wisdom? Or am I go somewhere else? No, that's probably it, right? I think you ended the generic term of brotherhood. No, wait, we kept going. Sorry, my page turned on. There's just no words for it, right? No, there's just there no words for what we're just struggling yeah, to the master to find of the wisdom. Words. Yeah, there is really no words for it because when you start to develop subjectively, and that's where you're going to be developing at this point, uh, you know, you're not going to grow another set of ears or, or, some other weird appendage because you've advanced somehow. This is subjective growth. We're using the physical body we've got with all its pieces and parts. Um, 
it is subjective. It's all internal. And for the most part, you don't have words for those yet because you're experiencing things that uh, haven't been defined and brought outward. And probably it would defeat the purpose if they tried. The, the words just couldn't carry the water, so to speak, of the level of development that you're experiencing. Because this, there's only so much of a being that's in form on this chart. And then it jumps to formless. And then you're, you're starting to move closer to pure consciousness with less obstructions to it. We become less dense. Okay. <laughs> as we go up. Not as we gross. Get rid of those. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tom, are you thinking or are you going to speak? Oh, I wasn't going to speak, but I'm always nope. thinking. So All I right. was just going to say our, our, our skull walls have uh, thinned. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So it's to the master of the wisdom is where we're going, right? Uh, to the master of the wisdom, the nature of spirit or that positive center of light which every form hides is no more a mystery than is the nature of the soul to the esoteric psychologist. The source of the one life, the plane, or the state from which that life emanates is the great hidden mystery to the members of the hierarchy of adepts. And so she's talking again about one page 117. The nature of spirit its quality and type of cosmic energy, its rate of vibration, its basic cosmic differentiations are the study of initiates above the third degree and a subject of their investigations. So when she talks about the hierarchy, and now we're talking about one that's not visible, this is people who have advanced to the point where they have consciousness. Um, the third initiation is on the mental plane, and so, and then they start to connect to one of those big triangles. And so they do not necessarily at a certain point need form anymore, but they're, they're always studying now the, the world of consciousness. They're less interested in studying a mineral and, and finding out what its parts are as they are now it's mental and let's go because we want to know what's happening on these realms up here. What kind of energy is there? What kind of consciousness does it have? And we're becoming consciously aware of all those levels. That's the pathway. That's the initiatory pathway that takes you all the way up that chart. Um, they bring to that study a fully developed intuition. She's talking about hierarchical studies now of, of uh, people who have made some of the breakthroughs. Uh, and that's why they've got the developed intuition, plus that mental interpretive capacity, which their cycle of incarnation has developed. That's the other thing they say, you know, you can't take it with you. Well, you find out when you get into Annie Besant that each lifetime, we collect vibrations. Those are our experiences. Uh, the soul came down here with some purposes. It's directed you in this direction or that. That is where you landed, so you'd have your experience. Uh, but you are collecting vibrations. So when you look at this chart on 117, each of the seven sections, um, there's vibrations that are sounded on each set of those planes. And for each initiation, you once you've conquered and you've got all of them on that given plane, um, because you've experienced them, and now we're not talking about one or two lifetimes, we're talking about eons of them, uh, then you can move on and move upward. And you'll have what's basically called an initiation. You get, you, you pass forward on that level. Well, though it's taken many, many lifetimes to get those vibrations. So that's where the soul comes in because 
this is where at the when your life is finished the synthesis of those vibrations get deposited in that soul and that soul saves them so when they say you can't take it with you they're not totally correct because what you came here to get you do take with you when you pass over it is stored in that soul and it will be continued to be stored each lifetime until you and it's at the third initiation that you have become conscious to the level where you can interact directly with the soul, absorb everything that's in there. It's now in your consciousness and you are moving on up into those bigger triangles from there on. So, and then actually the, uh, the, the body, the, the structure for the soul is called the causal body. They, they call it the causal body because this is because this is why we're incarnated right now. It's because our soul had cause to want to incarnate to get more experience in this, that, or whatever for each individual's purpose. Um, and then, like I said, preserves the experiences via the vibrations until you can become conscious right on the same level as the, as the soul. It's a construct that's been constructed for the purpose of getting you that far. Once you have made that connection, you, you can interact with your entire history, everything that's in that soul, it transfers over to you, then <coughs> on um, the fourth initiation, you give it up. And it's called the destruction of the causal body or the, the soul isn't needed anymore. It served its purpose. And then you're on your own, fully conscious. That's a big one to grasp. But anyway, um, and so then this material will indicate to you, then if you choose to incarnate um, for a purpose, you know, um, you will either take a body similar to the form you had, or you keep it when you give that up. Um, anyway, that's a lot of information there, but that's, there's a purpose on going, going up, but, and there's a purpose for the soul and there's a purpose for all these lifetimes and, uh, and ex experiences. And then you're on your way through the bigger triangles, if you will. You know, you can stop me and we can just keep going with this material too if you don't want to hear all these side trips. I love the side trips. <laughs> I liked them when I was doing this book with my mentor who would go off on stuff. So I'm sure it was as fun to me certainly as the, the material because I wasn't understanding a bit of it. Um, so the nature of spirit, its quality, its type of cosmic energy, its rate of vibration, and its basic cosmic differentiations are the study of initiates above third degree and subject of their investigations. Now you will see the word cosmic in here because this is the cosmic physical plane, that chart. And like I said, there's six more like it above it. If anybody thinks they're crowded down here. Uh, they bring to that study a fully developed intuition plus that mental interpretive capacity which their cycle of incarnation has developed. And that's what, when you, the little, <coughs> the interpretive capacity is, you know, you'll hear something and then zing, something else, the light turns on and you connect some other idea in your head to it and it and it grows. That's what I, what I think he means by part of that interpretive capacity. They employed the awakened and developed inner light of their souls to interpret and comprehend that life, which divorced from the world of form persists on the higher levels of consciousness and penetrates into our solar system from some exterior center of being. Um, so we are connected to some something beyond our solar system even. Uh, they throw this light, 
which is in them and which they manipulate and use in two directions, therefore. Standing as they do in the midmost state, that's meaning level number four, and functioning as they choose to function on the plane of the intuition or of booty. So in other words, when they've broken three of, through of just having to live in form, then you're gonna end up on plane number four. And from there, you're gonna work up and down. Um, so whatever is above comes down to you and you had to work your way up to that level four. They cast that light into the world of form. That's us, the world of form and know all things, interpreting all with the correctness. They cast that light into the formless realms of the higher three planes, formless from the standpoint of man in the three worlds below the intuitional plane and seek to understand through steady expansive growth, the nature and the purpose of that which is neither body nor soul, neither force nor matter, but which is the cause of both in the universe. Eventually, when the initiate has undergone the higher solar initiations and can function in the full consciousness of the monad, awareness of that which is divorced even from group form and from those nebulous sheaths which veil and hide the one become possible. The highest types of consciousness work from the plane of the monad, these, and the monad's right on the top plane, as the initiate of lower degree works from the plane of the soul and uses the organs of perception, if such an unsatisfactory phrase is legitimate, and means of knowledge of which average man has no idea. They penetrate or include within their radius of awareness that sum total of life, consciousness, and form which we designate God. These initiates of high degree then begin to be aware of a vibration, a revealing light, a note or directional indicating sound which emanates from outside our solar system altogether. The only way in which we can get an appreciation of the process followed in the expansion of the divine consciousness in man is to study the relation of the mind and the brain and note what follows when the brain becomes the intelligent instrument of the mind then study the relation of the soul to the mind. And that eventuates when man is directed by his soul and utilizes the mind to control the physical plane activities through the medium of the brain. In these three, soul, mind, and brain, we have the analogy and the clue to understanding of spirit, soul, and body and their mutual functions. This was the subject matter of the book, The Light of the Soul. Upon perfecting the conditions dealt with in that book, there follows still another expansion when the spirit aspect, man's emanating source of energy begins to use the soul via the intuition and to impress upon the soul consciousness those laws, knowledges, forces, and inspirations which will make the soul the instrument of the spirit or the monad, just as the personal man became at an earlier stage via the mind, the instrument of the soul. In that earlier stage, the development was twofold. As the soul assumed control via the mind, so the brain became responsive to the soul. Man was awakened to a knowledge of himself as he really was and to the three worlds of his normal evolution. Later, he became group conscious and was no longer a separated individual. As the soul is brought under the dominance of the spirit and analogous two stages are likewise seen. Um, anybody have any comments before I keep plowing? The one thing, uh, Donnie, when you made a comment about looking up the words and that this book is written extremely well, when you do look up words, you find that the definition of the word is exactly what they meant there. Um, it's amazing. And it, maybe it's just because 
uh, it was earlier in the century and, and you had some, some British mines and, and other training and they use English much more defined. Than well, it's much more complex too. I, I yeah. can, yeah, I mean, I can read some of it and, and if I'm off, I'll be like, well, that, that looks like a mistake. And I'm, I'm smart enough now with this material, to, I need to read it again. And sometimes I'm like, well, I missed that word. It's always right. I'm always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, a lot of the times also is you'll read a sentence, you'll say, what did he mean by that? And I know when we had groups, then they would start to try to explain it. And then you read the next sentence and he explains it. Yeah, he answers all everything that he gets at. Later yeah. on, it always comes. It's just so wild. Yeah. You don't have to talk about too much right away. You should you have to read the next paragraph to see if he finishes what you're what you're wondering about. Yeah, but the but the terminology in itself is um until you kind of get used to it, it's it can be a little difficult. Uh, yeah. It may not be as difficult in today's world as it was when I was originally in a group reading it, but um, yeah, because this was like foreign language to me in terms of yeah. the words and everything it meant, but um, somehow I've gotten used to it, I guess, over time. Uh, so we now, in, in the journey he's explaining, we have gotten um, gotten to what the first stage, the disciple becomes aware not only of his group and his allied group, but his consciousness is expanded until it might be called planetary consciousness. And that energy, that conscious expansion is going to come when you are aware and, and functioning on those upper planes in that upper triangle now. The quality of that energy has the quality of the information that he would be talking about. And you are connected. Uh, once you make a connection and the way he does it, I'm, I'm not gonna get into it right now, but building an anacarana, you build a line of light, you drive just very much like a spider, you know, has his web, but you use light and you use your mind and you, you direct your will actually uh for the most part i expect to go to what whatever your next step is and and it's all mental work at that point um it's not footwork or something like that that's the level he's at at this point of that mental work but uh his consciousness expanded until it's called planetary because he he's absorbing on a conscious level up on those upper levels now you can have a body down here you can have connected to or taken the third initiation and you can be working on those levels running around bipedal like we are um and not not necessarily you're not aware of that all the time it's going on and and it's happening um but your brain isn't doesn't even have the capacity to register it but by the same token you are growing and developing and advancing on the subtler levels and uh because i remember somebody who was uh running around thinking nothing's happening when is it gonna happen yeah you are shaking your head right <laughs> I've heard many of those little remarks out of Donnie. Mm -hmm. It's got to hurry up. Well, you taught, you taught all of us to have patience, Cara. So that's where this is going for me. <laughs> Need to have patience. Yeah, well, I'm talking about when you first, all this well, stuff started first opening up. <gasps> you know, yeah. I must be there already. That's, uh, they call that chela fever. Yeah. So how do you know when you are there or where you are or does it even matter? You just keep on going. <laughs> well, well, first of all, if, if you're verbal at all, then people will think you're crazy. Well, 
That's one uh, way you can know what comes out of their mouth. Shut up, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's one. That's one way you can know that you're not in the same place as everybody in your environment because they are, they are either doing this behind your back or whatever. Or they stop talking to you. <laughs> well, the, word, the words that are coming out of your mouth are uh, are strange. Right. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. yeah, because literally your consciousness is experiencing what you're seeing and then you're okay. just expressing it. And, um, you know, it's like you're reporting, ooh, blah, 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 you know, kind of stuff. And everybody's looking at you and, well, he's off on a bender, uh, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, like last summer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Carla yeah. said I wasn't even wasn't even here. She said you don't even know where you are, man. You're not even around here. <laughs> yeah. And and it tags in the same way um, as the cosmic consciousness when he talks about you. You, uh, it comes on you, and you don't, and and it goes away at its own time. Okay. And those were very, very short, but some of them are a little bit longer. So you get, and you get into these beautiful energy spaces. I mean, the energy is wonderful. Um, and you think it'll never go away. And of course it does because it fades, but what it has to do is it has to ground. It has to fully integrate and gets lost in dense matter, so to speak. You know, And people think, they think initially this is the way it's going to be forever now. And then they lament when it's gone. Oh, yeah. Where did it go? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they say, I lost it. I, you right. Know. Tom and I just had that conversation this week. Yeah. But you really haven't lost it. It's just more no, subdued you, because you're better at, you're, you're now gr better at grounding it or you're grounding yeah, it without really realizing you're grounding it. Yeah. It, that's, that's the one. You're grounding it without really realizing it. And it is just, it's got to be brought all the way down. Okay. That's part of your job. And um, so anyway, that's part of it. And you just, but generally you're experiencing a whole nother level of, uh, part of it I would probably say is beauty in terms of the quality of the energy in itself. And then depending upon what material you're getting, um, uh, you know, some of it sometimes is mental. I think I saw, and I don't know, uh, this was briefly, I didn't quite, I didn't look to see their full qualifications for analysis, but that the people who had these experiences in earlier stages, the majority of them got information about science, um, which would be appropriate now because we're up functioning in the mental plane, which is where you're gonna find science, uh, is right on the cutting edge. And um, I don't know even what, I don't remember, there were two or three other subject matters, but generally um, it was the majority of them got science, maybe some of them got some religion or something, but, <clears throat> but those are the early downloads. They're, it's called um, the cloud of Patanjali's cloud of knowable things. And you, uh, people just, I mean, it's there. And it's the next cutting edge for man to grasp. So some people get there faster than others because some people want to fast track. You know, you, um, it, it, it's like Buck says in Cosmic Consciousness, you can just sit there and let, and just go through the evolutionary stage without pushing, without drive. Um, you know, it might take another eon to get where somebody else who really pushed and drove got a lot earlier, but there's, there, there's nothing wrong with that. But there are people who just want to push ahead. You know, they, they they feel the call, the drive to do that. They feel the pull. They feel the 
And um, so that's what they're going to do. And we need the full proportion of people on all at all stages here to keep this thing stable. Well, Carla, over the years, your uh, your consciousness has never just plateaued, right? Like it, you, like you told me one time. I think you said that it's always uh, the wonders never cease, right? so it just mm -hmm. does really continue, right? Oh yes, yeah. Well, let's put it this way: according to this book. When, when you moved up into these upper planes, and now I'm just repeating what I've read. Um, when you get to, okay, each initiation is worth one plane. All right, so when you, but he said, when you get to level six, you are, it's time for you to make a decision where you're going after this planet. There are seven or eight pathways he lists in the back of this book. And I think I read somewhere, maybe they felt there was even more of an open awareness now. But in other words, <laughs> here you are, you're, you're either just a, a conscious form or you've got a physical body and a conscious form, depends what, what, at what point you're going to take that initiation, whatever six is. I guess. And then it's a deciding which pathway are you uh, going to go out on? One leads here, one leads there, some another one leads over there. Um, I mean, you know, that's a that's a pretty big issue. Because <laughs> all you're going to go in is your consciousness. You're not going in a body. You're at that point, you're up here where where it's all formless. And now you're going to go out into the big cosmos. And he makes the remark about you really won't, you won't know what you're getting into. You won't have any awareness. So anyway, so the point is, and then you're on another journey. So no, you, this never ends. You basically would have six more of these levels to work your way through if that is the journey. So, and, and the farther up you get, the humbler you get, for sure. Because one of the things that's happened is the ego, he uses the term ego with the soul. Okay. For a reason. When you, um, when the, the destruction of the causal body comes along or the soul, at level four, the ego is not there anymore. Okay. You prior to to that, yes, everything can be about me, 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 and I accomplish this and I accomplish that. Well, the humility comes the farther you go up the the chain. So you can you can evaluate basically where somebody is in reality by you know, how puffed up they are about their accomplishments, if you will, you know. Initially, there's Chela fever. You're so excited that this or that happened that you got to tell everybody, you know, um, and uh, which is fine because words got to get out somehow. <laughs> and so, so the excitement comes with that. But then it, there's just more responsibility and more seriousness and more humility the farther you go up that chart. And you're starting to remove yourself from the focus of these lower three levels anyway, in terms of your consciousness is, um, you know, you're, you're not necessarily too concerned about what's going on Saturday night, you know, and, and uh, who the latest rock group is and all of this and that, because as he states, when it comes to intuition, anything coming from the plane number four has nothing to do with your daily activities in the lower three dimensions of the world. It has to do with spiritual information and energy information on these levels, but it's, it's not giving you intuition of I should buy a red dress or, or any, anything down here. 
that's mundane. So did that well, answer? I'm going to tell you how to. The, that plane is not going to tell you how to trade stocks. No. No, right. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, and there isn't this, and there wouldn't be an intuitional. Uh, th that information, that information may come to you mentally because with your experience in that world and the way that yeah. that information starts to coalesce in your brain and you know its own little AI I suppose and figures out well this would be a good play to make or this would be a good hunch or something like that but that's down here on this level that's your brain but the intuition um, isn't interested in the activities of these lower three worlds. So Carla with with this part of it is so now like some stuff is starting to makes sense to me because part of you wants everybody to be on the same plane and kind of move up and get to that point but like you were saying everything needs to be balanced so some people are going to stay down here some people are going to go there so would you say with when this when we're talking about the cause of what the soul's causes for coming obviously is different for everybody but it's almost as if it takes you to that certain point where whether or not you're willing to get out of that comfort zone because that's what I feel like is happening now it's just like you know it's whether or not you're willing to push out of that comfort zone versus all right I'm here and I'm, I'm good like I, I'm good in this spot so maybe the mundane is better for some and they're willing to stay in that versus those who are willing to push through that little bit of their comfort zone to understand a little bit more so that's where the causal the causal body takes place so that that's what I'm getting out of that. Like we're not everybody is meant to be in the same place at the same time. No, not at all. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so that's where, that's where it's like part, you're like, cause right now it's part of me. It's like, why don't people, you know, Donnie, I think you and I talked about that when we had that long conversation that morning, like, why don't other people get this? Like, why, why can't, um, why can't other people see this? And, 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 um, and I think that's a lot about where, you know, where we are in our own selves, where you're just like, can everybody else see this? Why am I the only one seeing this right now? Um, because that's not where they are. And I guess Somebody's that's, that's tell something the I had to, been blinded. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> I think that's where I am now. It's just because there's certain things like, why isn't everybody seeing this? What is the problem here? Yeah. Um, so I guess it's that, you know, breaking what your soul is coming down to either break through to that next level or the level you were at is where people are just getting to. And it's just based, like you said, on that balance. So that that's something new for me to kind of, yeah. under, you know, get to <laughs> like, hey, we're not all meant to to all move up you know, the planes together, everyone's going to get there when they're supposed to get there. Um, it's just hard to accept <laughs> that everyone's not trying to get somewhere. So I guess, right. but everyone's where they're trying to get to is not going to be the same. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting out of it is that we're all put, we're all kind of, our souls are all on their own levels and whether or not they're busting through that comfort zone right. is whether or not you're reaching for and then we kind of have to give grace to those who are not in that same space or plane that we're we're working towards yeah it's the thing that i work with even with astrology is when i teach it first of all there's no bad signs <laughs> okay <laughs> because i can guarantee you the way that that circle is divided and the geometry of it there's uh it's designed for evolution and growth, which means it's got to press for change. And so uh, every set of four signs of, of the square that's in the circle is at, at odds all the time. So there's certain signs that don't like other signs, period, innately. They just, it, because they're not doing it their way, okay? Um, and you've got to remember, we, could, we can have some new souls and we've got older age souls around. So yeah, some are, it's just like school, first grade to 12th grade, you know, you, um, and hopefully that kind of information or focus allows you to make the room in your world for all these other people to exist without you needing to pressure them. <laughs> okay. And, and I, 
and that's the point I try to make to everybody is, um, yeah, you just got to make room for everybody else out there to exist. Because the important thing is that monadic energy, those little divine sparks, that is sustaining all of life on this planet. All of it. And, uh, and that's an important one to understand. Yeah, because it's just trying to take it into because we all kind of have like this area of our life and then we all have like the regular mundane, this is my every day. So just for me to put into my terms of what I think, cause you know, I work in human resources. <laughs> so I'll it's just it. like when things are happening at work that we're trying to, you know, I'm a trainer, but like, you know, but just when we're dealing with things and, and how people are treating each other or what have you, and I'm like, why, why aren't these people getting this? So that's this, like, this is how I relate the information. I take like the new stuff I'm learning and like, oh, this is why I get like upset <laughs> when certain things happen because it's not clicking. It's not happening. How can I, how can I bring what I'm learning to the mundane every day of my life without getting frustrated about it like I want everyone to to get to that you know I'm at a point where I'm just like all right I need everybody to see this too because it'll just make relationships so much better in the office you know um but they're not there and I get that you know I get that but um it's just hard to make people see like it's hard to be like hey that cloud looks like a cat and they're like no it's just a cloud you're like no but it looks like a cat and no it's just a cloud yeah like that's how I'm seeing it like you you can't get a person to that point unless they're willing or in the, they're in that space where they're willing to, to move it up. So in, when I'm thinking of everything we're talking about, I'm saying like, how does it relate, you know, and, and sure. how, how am I seeing it in my everyday to where maybe it's easier to understand the material a little bit better. Um, my own translation, I guess, of things and how, how I can um, absorb and take away from it. But um that's what I'm getting <laughs> at this point. It's like, all right, so calm yourself down at work a little bit more <laughs> when people are doing not so smart things, but, uh, but because they're not there yet. <laughs> so that's what I appreciate in learning all this stuff is like, how can I take this and, and, and um, not so much make it digestible, but ha like how, um, how can I grow from it with, um, or just accept the growing pains of it. You know, I guess that's what it really is, is accepting the growing pains of moving out of that comfort zone um, in relation to like every day and seeing how things are happening outside of my own consciousness, my own world in itself and how other people are behaving and just be like, why, why aren't they getting what I get? So that's, I'm just how I'm appreciating the material right now. <laughs> Well, I guess you could think about how does the planet feel? <laughs> it's got to deal with all of us. <laughs> Frustrating bunch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like, and part of you sees it, you know, now with social media, you kind of see, you know, where the rest of the world is in some of this. Well, Missy, yeah. the question then to me is, wait, why are you talking to me like that? I don't understand. Where am I? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. It's tough to read this and then go to work in your line of profession. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, can we take a quick break and reset? Uh, and then we'll just like five yeah. minutes or something. And I'll pause the, re I'll stop the recording and restart. Do you refill anyway? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right.